I love my job. I don't know whether I'm working or playing most of the time. And my job so far in this career has been mostly involved with fashion. And fashion is so fun, it keeps us all young because there's so many ways that fashion can change. I love getting young people involved because young people have a great flair for fashion and I love to get them to sew. So I have a candidate today that I think I might win and here she is, <laughs> Adrian. And it was great to have you on the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you saw this skirt and you saw us fooling around with it, you said, can I try it on? Totally. Yeah. And so I said, yeah. And it's just the kind of thing that, that you would be wearing. My daughter asked me if I could make this for her because she thought it was neat. And so I made it for her. And uh, I love young people, the way they sort of, things don't have to fit. I mean, this could be a waistband or it could hang be low. hang low wherever. What this is all about is a bunch, and I don't know if you've realized what it is, but it's very changeable. There's actually strings in here, and I can take that string apart and cool. let that hang so you can down. Have two different so you can, looks. Yes, or you can have some strings or some whatever. Yeah, so, higher on one side, yeah, lower on yeah. the other. I mean, cool. isn't that the fun? Yeah. Totally. Okay, it's like so two for you're one. with me. You want to do this? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how much sewing have you done? Have you? Um... Uh, I've done about a year of sewing. Okay, well, yeah. that's good. Uh, like in junior high? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you made yeah. the um, hoodie, or what did you make? The made a boxer sweatshirt, shorts. boxer shorts, yes, of course. pillow. Oh, what you're doing. Okay, you can easily do this skirt. Awesome, that's what I like, is I easy. Think <laughs> so often when you see, th see things like this in the store, you think, oh, it must be complicated. I've, I've got to buy it. I can't make it. Yeah, And the exactly. joy, of course, of making is that you can make it your own color, your own length. You can do totally. so many things with it. Creative so, freedom. Exactly. You're like. with me. You're with me. <laughs> so that's what this is. It's eight pieces stitched together. So there's eight gores. We call that a gore. Okay. And stitched together. And then all that we've done is put a waistband on it. And again, you put more or less elastic as to where you want this to be. Cool. And then you put these little ties. And these little ties can be made from ribbon or they could be made we kind of thought it looked kind of neat to actually have these ties showing yeah that'd so, be awesome another so look again shall i show you what it looks like yes shall we? <laughs> because here we go let me bring on the model because once wow. i had done one like this i said wouldn't it be neat to make this really elegant yeah. can you see be perfect this? for a wedding or something wedding or so for nice. your grad or yeah. something like this so let's just turn around as you can see we've just done a little t-shirt wow and that, i love that we didn't have to make the t-shirt but we made this our big sash belt, and here's all the bows on the right side. Beautiful. So you can wear this this way or the other way. It's nice. So yeah, cool. So it does Many take options. You. And of course, the scarf we've made in the show, so that's a really instant. That's the world's easiest scarf. Yeah. So this is all right. Good. So you are now aware of what <laughs> the potential might be to this. So there is skirt, and I think the other joy is. You can make a whole bunch of them. I mean, once you make one, probably all your friends and neighbors are going to come out of the woodwork too. Like, yeah. then, you know, <laughs> then you they make... can pay me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you are all of a sudden a fashion designer. Here we yes. go. Well, I designed this one, and I designed cool. it for simplicity. So this is the one piece. It's cut out one on the fold. One piece for piece. everything. Yes. Wow, that's you're elementary. With, you're I love with me it. On that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not complicated. This stuff is not rocket science. No and kidding. I think so often people don't realize that it can be very yeah, easy. Yeah, you look at the finished product and you're just overwhelmed, yeah. but you don't like, realize it's It would it's be faster simple. for you to make this than to go tramp in yeah. stores, shopping, trying to find yeah, it. Spend your time you and can your energy. Sitting at home and making it. So, cool. Okay, so I'm going to make one. All right, all right. <laughs> We're going to cut this out. So when you cut it out, I also like efficiency when I cut out. Because here, this one says it's to be on the fold. Mm -hmm. Then this one is actually this same piece just opened out. Wow. So cool. then I can make one cut there. And then I'll put this one over here. And cut across there. And now I've got one piece, two, three, four. four. Bam. And then I'll nice. it again, and I've got eight. Cool. The one will have a seam in it because that's not a fold over there, so you'll make that into a seam. Okay. So, but that's basically it. So we're going to take these pieces off. And what fabric could you use? The one, the first one that you tried on was a cotton. The second one that's a little bit dressier is kind of a sh shiny. It's a nylon fabric. So we could actually start by like just this. sewing these two together. Okay. And I better get my glasses on because serging, and, and you've probably become familiar with a serger. It, it, yeah. You don't have to have a serger, but a serger is a nice, nice to thing. have. Yes. <laughs> so if you can get access to a serger, that's good. And if not, 
actually we're going to show you a couple of other seams that you could do. So I'm just going to pin this. And it is a good idea to pin things. I see okay. that I didn't have them together when I cut them out. So we can oh, trim that off because okay. length is not a big deal on this. You're going to tie it up anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just pin that like that. But let me show you another couple of alternatives for your seams. Because if you wanted it to be totally reversible, you mm -hmm. wouldn't want to see the surging. Right. So you would sew one seam like this. Okay. And then you would just fold this one over top. In fact, when I sew it, I don't even sew it equally, so I don't have to trim one oh, off. Oh, cool. That makes it easier. So fold that one over, and then okay. just stitch down there. And that way you can see you've got a good seam on this side and a good seam cool. on this side. Oh, that's helpful to so know. So that way you'll know if you want to have it reversible. Okay. The other thing you could do is you could just sew a regular seam and then cover it with something. So that would be kind of that's fun cool. on one side. And then, it up. Yeah, and then you can make your little bows out of that, and that would okay. look kind of cute too. Awesome. So, or you could use ribbon. Um, I mean, this could go on and on. So what <laughs> I want you to do is I want to sew all these gores together. Okay. So I pinned this first one, but you would just cut them all out, pin them all together. And then start to sew. Okay. All right. Let's do so this. You're with me. Okay. <laughs> and we do have a serger here. So I would leave the pins in. And you see, it's not going to take you too long. Just line that one up. We'll take this pin out. And so there's your presser. The presser foot up here. We'll just put, the, put that under just a touch. And then give it Good some Good to gas. go. Good to go. Here we go. Okay. That's it. And it doesn't even really matter how straight it is. It doesn't all have to be. Don't go for the pin. <laughs> good girl. Don't good break girl. the machine. That, that's it. <laughs> and so then you just keep going. It doesn't matter how straight it is because it'll cut the yeah, extra material right. off. Yeah. Okay, let's just stop for a minute because you're on your right way. I probably should have started you from the bottom. You always go from oh, the wide okay. to the narrow. But I was so excited that you were going to sew that I didn't <laughs> do that. So, so that's okay. I'm excited so for the rest of them, start from the bottom okay. and go to the top. Then once we get all that together, we're going to put a waistband on and put your little ties on. And the ties, I don't know if you noticed, they weren't all equal. I had some higher and some lower, but that's on the pattern. I didn't notice. It makes it random. That's yes, good. and that makes it kind of uneven. Okay. So I think we're sad. I think we've hooked another new sewer, and this is wonderful. So keep on sewing. Thank you so much. Don't go away, because we've got more good stuff coming up. Guests of our show stay at Travel Lodge. Nice rooms, great people. Models provided by Chan International. Number one in personal development training, modeling, and acting. because there's just so many possibilities and I'll never get tired of it because there's just always one more thing to learn. And I'm fascinated by this basket and I'm lucky enough to be joined by the person that made it, Jean Connor. So welcome to the show. Thank you. And what got you going? Well, let's say the whole field of fiber arts. Where, where has it taken you or how, how, how has it happened for you? Um, I took weaving in art college at Calgary Art College. Uh -huh. And then I was into weaving and I be had a lung disease and I could no longer weave. Okay. And then I got arthritis really bad and couldn't do it. But my yarn was in my basement <laughs> and I <laughs> and had to touch my yarn. Yeah. That hand, that hand uh, was not yeah. done. No. Okay. So I started, I took a small class on making a little coil basket, mm -hmm. and then I studied the baskets, and I went. <laughs> I started doing my own designs. I started... Um, Experimenting, yes, I'm sure. Yes, I did, with all my yarns, all the different kinds of yarns, sure, sure. and growing them bigger and bigger, and... Smaller and smaller. <laughs> yeah. and everything. So everything. I think, I think that's wonderful, because you said you really don't... People are not pure in one particular form of fiber. Once you get your taste and feel of fiber, you try so many different ways and try so many things. And, and I, I also have to show your hand because you said your hand is not really cooperating as, as no. it used to, but it's doggone it's not done yet. You're right. It's and I think still going. I think that's great. So, yes. <laughs> so you're going to show us then how... Actually, I'll the other thing start. before you do that, okay. you also told me that you're known to silversmithing. Oh, yes. So this is great, too. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My crippled old hands will do yeah. anything okay. I want them to. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay. So what do we need to make a basket like that? Um, a core and my yarns. Okay. So I started off with a core, which is wrapped in a piece of hockey tape to start with. Okay. So that just keeps it from fraying and that just sort of yeah. makes it okay. And, then, and did you try, I mean, are there other things that I could use for this? Could I use like that kind of cord? Or? Yeah, I use um, the um, garden core. Um, yeah. 
So whatever. Is, whatever is smooth. And round. Round. Smooth is important, though. Yes, and I like the weight of the bungee cord because it makes the baskets a nice, solid basket. Yes, that's true. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and there's lots of it available. So let's Right, you're right. Okay. <laughs> so I just start winding it around. Okay. And then I round it like this. When you started, did you actually put it back there and wrap it? So that it was yes, so almost like when you do knitting, you yes. lay it down and mm -hmm. then you start wrapping, wrapping and you it. just wrap and wrap. Sure. And then you bend this over, you wrap it some more, and I've now got my center. Okay. And when you bend that, was there a certain amount that you had to bend it, or does it matter? No, as it's got to do with the, the width of the cord. Sure. It'll okay. it'll bend easier. Give if it a go, push, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then we'll just push it back over this way. We will stitch it into the one underneath it. And we've got it already threaded, which is good. Yes. And the needle that you're using, you said uh, it shouldn't necessarily be a bodkin because bodkins are too thick. Yes. You want it I like it. It's like a darning needle. Sure. It's got a sharp end, and then I file it off. Okay. I, I buy needles the, for thick the eye. And, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can relate to now that. No, I, yeah. I do use finer ones because I find that if I'm using um, fine yarns, it will yes. slip out of holes, so sure, I'll have sure. uh, smaller holes. Sure, sure. So we go like this. We'll just keep... Keep going, yeah. and you just go around and around. Mm. You can fill in the in the bottom when you go. Sure. You don't really see your stitches there at all. No. Yeah. Then you might decide at some stage to add a color. To add a color, and like I'm, you're you're sort of going to be starting with something like this. Then you'd probably suggest that you start with a small one. A small basis. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes, because the other big ones will take 52 to 85 hours. Well, that's a small base, but then you got to kind Just of carry it away. Throw. And I love what you've done with patterns and things. So you're going to show us now how you can put a pattern in there? Yes. Okay. And this is, uh, I have started another yarn. You lay the yarn down beside it, and then you'll wrap. Mm -hmm. Now you can get a stitch Oops. by doing this, Oh, and, and you'll get a stitch a shingle. Below, below you. I, I don't see, always like I see that. that. That's happened here. You've got a few of those. Yes. Yeah. And then I'll wrap. But if I don't want it to show, like on here, I will sew into the bottom part. Just catch oh, the just yarn. Just catch it a little bit so that it still yeah. hooks. And then just just so that it's joined. And how do you decide when it's going to start to come up? Is I that... usually do a drawing first. That's a good so idea. I know yeah. um, sure. the sure. shape that I want it. Sure. And then and I'll they just go. sort of do it you by can, feel. Yes. Like you just sort of you know. can start off and you can start make the rows go. Out yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. Or you, you can, can have the rows that go up. straight up. Yeah. And then you just curve it into the top. Yes. And add. And then what sort of brought this little business? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is I called my. <laughs> you must have had a drink after you got going a little while or something. I don't, I don't know. know why I started this. Call yeah. them squiggles. I love These it. These were very, very popular at one time. Yeah. I just yeah. took the cord after I had wrapped it. Yeah. And then I just twisted. Okay. You just twist it okay. and twist it until it sort of bends like that. Yeah. And then I would stitch it down. Yeah, with the yard. And let it just happen. Yes, it just happen. Like it looks like they're wired, but it's not. It's nope, just the cord. It's just yeah. the cord. So no, then then you become very oh, I think that is quite wonderful. <laughs> so let me just review. What kind of yarn could I use? What could I what could I Things I that are left over? Yes. Could I yes. use anything? Oh yes, you could use that one. That yeah. would be really quite comfortable. Be, that would be would wonderful. Be fun. Yeah. Yes. But you could use anything that you've anything. got around. This is a variegated one that started with a variegating. This variegated is a, yarn um, would be good. I think wire? it was left over from a baby sweater. <laughs> Leftovers are good. <laughs> yes. Oh, you said you use wire? Yes. You do wire I use actually wire with the cord, and okay. then I'll shake them. I have a little show on at the Craft Council right now that have birds. Oh, And so my. I've had to use the wire and petals of flowers uh -huh, uh -huh. that uh, then I can bend oh, yes. the shapes I want. I can say you can just sort of let your mind go. You can. Have you ever cut up fabric? Because that would kind of tickle me. I like did. I up. like blue jean ones, and they make really nice fruit bowls. Oh, yeah. So how wide would you cut it? About half an inch? About half an inch. And then yeah. you wrap it. I would think and that you do exactly the same fast. as I was doing here. Sure. I actually went down on sure. the row underneath and came back out. It's like okay. a figure eight. Okay. Well, thank you, Jean. This is just fantastic. I, I love what you've done, and I love your spirit. This is great. <laughs> thank you. So don't go away, because there's more good stuff coming up right away. magic today and I believe in magic I think it's just magical how you can take threads like this and make them into wonderful things 
and many more wonderful things. And helping me, my fellow magician, is <laughs> Debbie Pate. So it's good to have you at the show. Thank you. And you are a thread magician for sure because, I mean, I think it's just exciting how these things can transform. So what kind of thread are we going to use today? We're going to use heavy thread. Oh, I do like heavy thread because it's almost like yarn. Mm -hmm. And it gives you so much show for so little effort is the way I exactly. think of it. Like exactly. If you're going to do it, make it show. Fabric gets all the credit. Yes. But thread can do a heck of a lot oh, for your yes. projects. Yes, yes. And thread is so much fun because you can combine them and you can... Oh, there's just many, many things. You've got a sample here, I think, of different weights of thread. Different Isn't that weights of thread. We're used to working up here. This but is a 40 weight rayon. This is kind of a wimpy thread, is this? Yeah, okay. <laughs> 40 weight, okay. 40 weight. This is a 12, starting to give you some higher impact. So when you go smaller numbers, it gets bigger. It yeah? gets bigger. Okay. And so is this still going to be able to go through my machine? This will go through your needle. Okay. okay. Yeah, That's 12 good. weight rayon yeah. through. I use a size 14 embroidery needle. Okay, sure. But this one, I haven't found a big enough needle yet. Okay, and that's I looked for my one frustration. I want this. So how do I do this? In the bobbin. Oh, I know. I knew we you were fake out our that. machine. This is good. <laughs> this is good. The machine doesn't understand, so you just make it, put it in the bobbin. What you're going to do is you're going to wind it onto a bobbin like this. Mm -hmm. Can you put this actually wind it by machine, or can you just roll it, or what do you do? By machine or by hand. If you can get it to work by machine, you might get a little bit more on your bobbin, yeah, and the yeah. more you get on, the longer you can sew. So yeah, yeah. Okay. But if it's a little too heavy for your bobbin, you can always wind by okay, hand. Okay, so you could actually put as thick as you want. Mm hmm You can. Okay. It, it might not go very far if you only got that much on, I suppose. That's the trick. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, show me some of the things that you've done with thread then, and because thread is... is is, is your method of speaking because you're... I love you're, thread. Yes, okay. I love thread. And I love it in all different weights. Sure. Fine weight, not for Fine today. Weight. No, no, no. Medium weight, well, it's nice, but... Well, yeah, it's got some good things, but I like the variegated business. That's, that's good. Okay. But not for today. Okay, not for today. Heavy weight. Okay, heavy weight. We've couched heavy weight thread. Okay. Now, this time we didn't do it through the bobbin, not yet. We stayed on the top of the fabric. Okay, so when you couch, you're actually going to zigzag right over top of the thread. Yes. And there's a foot that that thread just fits under you, and just sits there. Using our cording foot, you can use one, two, or three. Some, some machines have actually five. Okay. And you can put the thread through and stitch over it with mm -hmm. a serpentine yeah. or a zigzag yeah. stitch. Yeah. And so that kind of controls it a little bit. It does. Keeps it nice and straight sure. for you. Okay. And now is this couch? No, what is this? This is huh? this is where we're starting <laughs> to get into the bobbin. Yeah. So you put your thread into the bobbin, and you can either increase your bobbin, open your bobbin tension, so you're decreasing the tension, or if you're not ready to play with the tension yet, get another bobbin case. I think that sounds like the most sensible thing. Just have two bobbin cases, because then you don't have to worry. You've just got mm -hmm. one for, for the bobbin work and one for the... Regular, so yeah. Exactly. But, but in the meantime. Yeah. In the meantime, while you're waiting for that bobbin yeah, case to come, yeah. bypass the tension. Sure. Don't sure. go through the tension discs and see what happens. Stitch out your patterns. Sure. And what you're going to do is stitch from this side. So this looks like regular stitching. So there's mm -hmm. all your regular. Mm -hmm. And then this is what you look from the underside. So that is exciting. So, so you get your own little menu to play yeah. with. As long as you remember to sew from the wrong side. Yes. yes. And that's the key. We're yes. working from the wrong side. So maybe a good be beginner project with a straight stitch, mark one line. Okay. And then use your quilting foot, that bar, yes. and ride make along and make parallel lines. And then on this and side, look, this beautiful get? grid that you yeah. get. Yeah, that's a great one. Okay, there's a like. I now like. we can we can keep fooling our machine. We need to make another line that we can follow from the back. So on the front, because I see what you're saying is if I if I stitch there, I have nothing to go by. You don't know if you're going to catch that like fiber I don't know or if I'm not. I'm going to hit this or not. So you use a nice fine thread, something that's just going to disappear. And you've stitched down the middle of that. Stitched down the middle of the torn strip of silk. Okay, and then on the this side, you can see that you can go by that line. Oh, this is getting good. <laughs> okay, I like this. You All can right. do your, your good old stipple, meander. Um, from the back, you don't need any guide to follow. Mm -hmm. But just as a coincidence, I did this on a nappy fabric and found that I couldn't slide it so it well. Stick. Yeah. So I used tissue. Okay. Tear away tissue. I put that on, my fabric slid. Oh, yes, I started nice using thing. more and more of this tear so this away is all tissue. from this side and, and with the tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then that. let's have a quick look at some of the other places that you've used the heavy threads. So well, when I did my sampler, I really liked this simple stretch, stretch stitch as mm -hmm. it came out from working on, in mm -hmm. the bobbin. This is a so great place to experiment with all these stitches. You've got a mm -hmm. million of them on the machine, so use them. A million, a million stitches and all <laughs> different colors. And a million kinds of threads, so there, there you go. A good point to remember when you're working from the back is to leave a long tail when you start and a long tail when you finish okay. and draw them through to the back and knot them. Okay. 
Okay. You don't want to get them caught in the front. This one's got my name all over it. I can see. So <laughs> Literally, this yes. And I see what you've used here is this thread. Yes, so uh, just nice high up. impact glitzy metallic. Yeah, and this yeah. is all free motion. Free motion with bobbin work when you've bypassed the tension is very unpredictable. So you can get little bobbles of extra thread. And we call that texture. That's texture, <laughs> yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. So there but there's, there's that there's tissue it. again. Yeah, yeah. I had to write your name backwards. Yeah. Okay. Flip over the tissue. All right, I, I can't stand it any longer. You're going to have to do this. So here is a th bobbin that I've kind of put some thread on. Uh oh. So you just show me how you do this. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll try a stitch like this. Okay. This Corneli bobbin stitch. Sure, sure. We'll that, give that a that whirl. That's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you going to do it on that, or do you want me to? How about I bring this over here? You can do it on this one. Good. Okay. okay. There we go. And we'll see what happens. So you're just going to put that in your bobbin like it was regular. Into my bobbin, but not going through the tension. Okay. Just bypassing the tension. Don't mention anything to your machine that is different, and it won't know the difference. Is that exactly. it? Exactly. Okay. So we'll keep it a secret. All right. I'm going to use my my upper thread to pull, draw up the bobbin through. thread. And that's something I should be doing. And I've got my nice long tail. Okay. Now I'm going to use a sculpture stitch, like a triple stitch. Okay. I've set my machine for a triple stitch. All right. And you so don't that means it goes ahead, it goes back, it goes ahead, it goes back, it goes right. ahead, it goes back. And it's that back and forth motion that's going to give us those nice little bobbles. Oh, yeah. Okay, now this is going to be a surprise for me and you. <laughs> Leave a nice long tail. Don't use your automatic gonna, thread yeah, cutter. Yeah, because you're going to tie that. And there is the one that we've just done. Is that beautiful or what? That's great, Debbie. Thank you so much for coming because that was just lots of fun. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And you love thread so much Thank that you. I know you even wrote the book. And this is a wonderful little book. So do come back and join us again another day. That would be a lot of fun. Okay. And you join us another day because we're going to do this all over on Linda McPhee's workshop. To receive the companion book for this series with all of the project details, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee or visit us on the web at www.mcpheeworkshop.com. Sponsored in part by Janome, quality sewing machines since 1921. And by Rowenta. The Garment Care Experts, meeting the needs of the sewing enthusiasts for over 100 years with high-performance irons, steamers, steam generators, and ironing boards. And Wonderfill Specialty Threads. Thread for the way you sew. And by The Woolen Mill Store, your source for quality fabrics and more. Featuring the largest selection of wool and wool blend. Yardage from Pendleton Woolen Mills. And by Horn of America. Experience quality, innovative ideas, and customer service. And Creative Festival. Bursting at the seams with hundreds of industry experts, conference classes, exhibits, and more. Experience creativity in the making.